Well, good morning. You know how sometimes some of the best plans that you have just don't work out? Well, this past week I was, uh, I was at Nags Head, so I thought it would be really, really cool if I was to preach a sermon on the beach. And so I did. And let me tell you, it was a great sermon. So I went to upload it about an hour ago to Facebook, and guess what? The file was too big, and it said it would not upload. So, I deleted it, and here I am live, 9 a.m., from the West household. But it's good to be home, and it's really good to be with you today as we worship the Lord together. I thank the Lord for his many blessings, and I know you do too. Um, <clears throat> let me just go through a few announcements with you, just one. I want to give you an update on Andrew and Courtney, the young couple that uh, lost uh, um, a lot of items to the fire in their house. Uh, they're doing well. Uh, they're still in a hotel waiting to get into a rental home, and they'll probably be out of their home about nine months, which is going to be a right good while. But I just wanted to thank you for them, and she's expressed this to me, she and Andrew, that they're just overwhelmed with your kindness and with the food that's been taken to them, and it's, and it's just wonderful. And so they are, they are being blessed because of you. And I was telling somebody that some people may think that our church is closed, but I will tell you our church is very, very active, and I thank you for that. If you'd still like to make a donation to them and help them monetarily, if you go to my Facebook page and scroll down, you'll see the address uh, that you could mail them something to help them during this time. All right, next uh, Sunday's sermon will be inside the church, but because I was on vacation, I didn't get back till yesterday afternoon. Um, I decided that this morning... Well, I really had it all planned, but this morning I will do it from home. So God bless you. I think there must be a reason that we're together live today. And uh, so anyway, we will forge ahead. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for this time that you've given us. And God, I thank you for your mercy and your blessings. Thank you, God, that even when our best plans don't, don't work, we know that you are there with us and will help us. And God, thank you so much for, for what you do for us on a day-to-day -day basis. And God, it just seems like there are so many people this week that, that have the COVID virus, you know, getting phone calls and things. God, I just pray that you'll be with those families as they recuperate. And God, just uh, thank you for being the great healer that you promised. And Lord, for those families that may have lost loved ones this week, I just pray that you'll be with them. Now, Lord, I pray that you'll be with our service, that it might touch someone's heart today as we talk about joy in Jesus' name. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, now let's see if uh, Kermit might have a little word for the children this morning. Let's see. Kermit, are you there? Oh, hi there. Hi, boys and girls. Um, let me uh, call roll. How about that? Abram, Adlin, Apollo, Aubrey, Berkeley, Boone, Braylon, Bruno, Camden, Cameron, Carson, Carter, Chase, Claire, Emerson, Emily, Evie, Felicity, Gavin, Graham, Grayson, Haley, Hayden, Jackson, Kinsley, Lacey, Levi, Lizzie, Michaela, Mallory, Maddie, Melanie, Nelson, Noah, Olivia, Reagan, Riley, Rudy, Skyler, Sophia, Summer, Talon, Taylor, Wade, Willow, and Zoe. All right. Well, Pastor Bill's going to preach about joy today. What are some things that make you happy? 
I can I know what makes me happy. I love riding my bike. Ding 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 ding. I love riding my bike. I love going for a walk. I love playing uh, leapfrog. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be pretty normal, wouldn't it? Leapfrog, get it? I'm a frog. Leap. Oh well. Okay. And um, let's see. I like when my mom and dad play hide and seek. That's always fun. And I love playing with my friends outside. All those things make me smile. What are some things that make you happy today? Oh, yeah, I hear some of them. Mm -hmm, that makes me happy, too. Well, you know, God wants us to be happy. There are times we're going to be sad, like when we fall down and get a boo-boo on our knee or something. Or... Other times, things might make us sad. But you know, God wants us to be happy almost all the time because He loves us so very much. Okay, boys and girls, that's our lesson for today. And I will see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kermit. Okay. I'm pretty sure my sister Shirley is going to be singing a song that's going to be on my facebook page in a little bit so thank you shirley for doing that all right i want to preach this morning about joy and there's a story of a little boy and it could have actually been me um and he was in church with his mother and he was a good boy quiet and well behaved yeah that was probably me he didn't cause any problems but every once in a while he would stand up on the pew turn around look at people behind him and smile, and oftentimes he would wink. I was known as a good winker when I was a little kid. I think Faye and Diane were behind me, and they egged me on. But I remember people would laugh, and they would smile. And uh, this little boy was doing this, and all of a sudden his mother realized what he was doing. So she grabbed him and spun him around and told him to sit down and remember that he was in church. Any of that sound familiar? And when he started sniffling and crying, she turned to him and said, Now, that's better. It's sad, isn't it, that many people have the impression that living a Christian life is all gloom and doom. And there's really nothing here to bring joy in our lives. But if I was to ask you this morning, what is one thing that people need today more than ever, you may say jobs, money, stability in their relationships, but I would tell you I believe most people need joy in their lives. And maybe today you need joy in your life, and hopefully this sermon will help. You know, all of us desire to have joy in our lives, no matter what we call it, happiness, gladness, delight, good cheer, We'd all like to experience more of it. And the quest for joy is even enshrined in our Declaration of Independence as a God-given right, where it says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and you know the last part, in the pursuit of happiness. But unfortunately, the realities of this life oftentimes bring everything to a grinding halt. Life seems to throw roadblocks in our way. On the highway to, to happiness, we get roadblocks called suffering, sorrow, disappointment, loneliness. You can add the roadblock in there if you want to. But then occasionally we do have glimpses of joy. Celebrating a wedding or a wedding anniversary, holding a newborn baby uh, that's just come home from the hospital, Maybe getting that promotion at work. And sometimes we find joy in little things in life that are like the Hallmark commercials. Watching a son or daughter perform a school play. One of my favorites is sitting by the fire on a cold winter night drinking hot chocolate. Mm. Uh, spending a quiet Saturday afternoon outside messing in the yard. Um, but you can find joy in worship as well, can't you? Coming here to sing praises to God in your home, in your car, to hear God's word online, to listen to his voice, and to be with other people who love 
the Lord and love you as well. Well, for many, these encounters with joy seem to be the exception rather than the rule. Instead of, feel, instead of feeling hopeful and positive, most of the time you find yourself lapsing regularly into joyful and joyful joylessness and depression and despair, sometimes even bitterness. And we just get a feeling of being down and discontentment. <clears throat> we all experience it. Excuse me. We all experience it. Even in my household, in the last five, six weeks, there have been some things going on in my family that has made us very sad. And, and it has. It's taken a lot of the joy out of our life. But, and those things come up. Those relationship things that come up. Or, and just let you know, it's nothing between Barbara and I. We're still good. Been married 45 years. We're going to con continue. But it, you know, you have families like that too where things pop up. Well, I do have good news for you. God intends for his children, for you and me, to live in happiness as much as possible. Yeah, we're all going to have the dark moods and we're going to struggle, but those should be the exception rather than the rule. Too many people have it exactly backwards. Viewing joy as something very rare and unusual while viewing its opposite as the norm. We're almost afraid to hope that things could be any different, afraid that we may be disappointed again, and that's a problem. My concern is that you do not settle for a subpar Christianity, but that we seek after and receive all that the Lord has for us in Christ. Now, I've got some scripture passages, and I'll give you just a moment to get a pencil and paper so you can write them down and go read them to yourself a little bit later. And I will read them to you now. The first one is found in Psalms chapter 5, verse 11. Psalm 5, 11. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Isn't that a beautiful verse? How about Psalm 32, 11? Psalm 32, 11. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. Psalm 16, 8 through 11. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. That's Psalm 16, 6 through 11. And how about Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say rejoice. And finally, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, Be joyful always. Joy is a tremendous blessing that God has given us. And God desires us to have it. The thing is, He provides the joy. And it comes to us from the Holy Spirit. God doesn't expect you to manufacture joy on your own power. He doesn't demand that somehow you force yourself to feel joyful. We couldn't even if we tried. What he wants from us is simply receive his joy. Receive his joy. But unfortunately, people look for joy in everything except the Lord, don't they? They look at circumstances, good health, supportive relationships, career advancement, financial security, safety and security, but that doesn't work. Why? Because there's always a fly in the ointment, isn't it? There's always something missing, something lacking. And none of us has the power to insulate ourselves from the pain of living in this fallen world. Eventually, and probably sooner or later, something will break our bubble. 
Something will puncture that perfect life we've labored so long and hard to construct. And then we will find the joy derived from circumstances is short-lived and ultimately unsatisfying. But the joy the Lord gives us lasts forever. The kind of joy that can survive a critical, uh, people being critical to you, the kind of joy that persists even when you have health problems, when families disappoint you, the kind of joy that remains undiminished when dreams collapse, and when work gets so hard, and so many things come up against you. In short, that's the time when God wants you to reach out to Him and say, God, give me joy even in this bad circumstance that I'm in. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 3-10. through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 3-10. through 10. And here's what Paul says. In troubles, hardship, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness, in the right hand and in the left. Through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. So why did Paul say that? Because Paul experienced every one of those in his life, and in the end, he still would say, be joyful in all things. There's not a category here that Paul hadn't experienced that he can't still say, because of the Lord, I'm rejoicing. I, was, I spoke a little bit earlier about Courtney and Andrew and the fire that they had at their home. And some of you have spent time with them and I will tell you that the time that I have talked to them or been with them, they are still joyful. So how can you get joy out of having your house be on fire and lose most of your possessions? Because they get their joy from the Lord. It's not in circumstances and it's not in things. So they are being blessed. And because of being blessed, from the Lord, they are joyful and they are very thankful for how God's family has rallied around them. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. And when we reflect on when we reflect on the promises of God. Concerning our eternal destiny, that also can be a source of great joy. But God's joy is also here when we're on earth. So how can we get that joy? How do we sustain that joy? Well, one thing you can do is read God's Word, isn't it? And I quoted a lot of, read a lot of the Psalms this morning. That's a beautiful place. To go in and just start reading and seeing how it can really, really help you during times. And will give you that joy. But you have to take that time. And you have to want to study God's word. And let him speak to you. And Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I love that. I love the thought that God has us in his hand, don't you? And then what I want you to do is imagine that God is speaking to you personally this morning 
by adding your name into it. Pastor Bill, do not fear, for I am with you. And you can insert your name. Do not fear, for I am with you. And just doing that will remind you that the Bible just isn't words on a page, but it's a sword of the Spirit. And it's defense against temptation. It's what God uses to bring joy in our life. And quote some verses if you can. Study God's Word and allow Him to give you that joy. Well, how do we know that God will give it to us? Because there's a promise in Matthew chapter 7, verse 9 through 11. It says, Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, and he's talking about us, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So isn't that a promise? The Lord is saying, you parents, as good as you are and you give good gifts to your children, our Heavenly Father will surpass that and give us the gifts that we need. Oh my goodness, that is a an encouraging word today. So remember that God's word will accomplish his purposes and will give us joy. The issue is not us. We can't do this. But the, the, the purpose in this is that God can give you joy. Even right now in your life, God can bring you joy so that you have a joyous day today with him. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 tells us this. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So the Lord promises that he will give us that joy. And I will tell you today that you need to ask God for that. I can't bring you joy your spouse can only bring you temporary joy. The things of this earth, the Bible says, will fade away. But those things of the Lord will last forever. So as believers, let's allow God to give us joy in our life. And believe me, we all struggle with this. Yes, pastors, teachers, uh, everybody struggles with this at times. The key is not to stay there. The key is to remember that God is with you and can bring you joy. Amen? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for the people who are watching today. God, I pray if there's someone here today that needs that joy in their life, that they may call out to you right now. And God, fill them with your presence and fill them with your joy. God, thank you for the promises of the Scripture. Thank you, God, that you will put that joy in our life and that we will have it everlasting because of you. Thank you for those who are watching again and just bless them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the service today. And let's be a joyful people this week. And as I conclude, let me just say one way to be joyful is to do something for other people. Is to show them the love of God. Be careful because the virus is out there. Um, I know some people say it's a whole lot of nothing. But I will tell you the phone calls that I've gotten this week from people that I know who are suffering with it. It's more than nothing. It is something to be taken seriously. And I love you. And I don't want you to get sick. I want you to, to be careful. And in a couple of weeks, our elders are going to meet again. And we are going to look at our situation and make a determination whether we can open or not. But whether we do or whether we don't, I want you to know that we love you and we want the best for you. We don't want you ending up in the hospital. And no, I'm not being an alarmist. I'm being a realist. Because I've been praying with people and for people this week who are struggling 
to breathe and struggling with lung disease. And maybe some of your loved ones um, are struggling with it today. And I just pray God's blessing upon them. All right, God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.